Hi, I'm Mariana, and welcome to another episode of GH Ditch Club. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make our heart mittens, so let's get started. What you'll need for this project is yarn in a medium number four weight, and I'm using a worsted wool in white and black as my contrast color. Then you'll need two sets of double pointed needles in a size three and a size four, a pair of snips, a couple of stitch markers, a darning needle to weave in your ends and for the embroidery, and it's good to have a measuring tape on hand. To begin, we're gonna use our US3 circular needle and the worsted weight yarn in your main color. And we'll cast on using a long tail cast on. I'm gonna be showing you how to knit our small medium size, but if you download our pattern, it also has the large extra large men's size. So to begin, we will make a slip knot and thread your needle on. Then to create a long tail cast on, you'll hold your tail side around your thumb and the working yarn around your index finger. And to cast on, weave your needle under the yarn on your thumb and then under the yarn on your index finger and pull through. And this is how we long tail cast on. And for the small medium size, we're going to cast on 46 stitches. My husband's always like talking to me when I'm counting and I'm just like, 12, 13, <laughs> 14, like. <laughs> so now we've cast on 46 stitches and this is going to create the wrist for the glove. And this is going to look really absurdly tiny, but you have to trust me, this is going to really, really stretch and you want it to be a nice fit. So to knit in the round like this, we're going to use a method called the magic loop. And I use a slightly modified version of this. And to do that, you will bend your circular needle and push it through a bit about a third of the way of the stitches, and then you will push it through again. So you have the stitches about divided up about a third each. And I'll show you what that looks like. It might seem a little tricky at first, but once you practice, you'll get the hang of it really quickly. So it kind of makes a diamond shape and you'll be knitting in the round like this. And as you get to the end of the stitches on your working needle, you'll push the loop around and I'll show you how that works. So to begin, make sure you have the working yarn on your right and make sure all the stitches are facing inward like so, so that they're not twisted. You'll slide your stitch marker onto your right hand needle and then start knitting in knit one, purl one rib. So this first stitch here will knit and then purl all the way around and we'll knit in knit one, purl one rib for three inches to create the cuff of your mitten. I like to use this magic loop method when knitting small things in the round, uh, personally, Double pointed needles are a little tricky for me. I always seem to have a ladder or a gap where they meet and this method totally eliminates that. 
So when you've worked all the stitches on your left hand needle, you'll move your loop around. So pull your needles through and then just reposition them again. So they're divi divided, the stitches are divided about a third on each leg. So a third on the left hand needle, a third on the right hand needle, and a third on the cord. So here's the magic loop as we continue along knitting on those first cast on stitches. When you come to the end of your first row, you'll just slip the marker onto your right hand needle and continue knitting. You'll continue knitting in this knit one purl one rib until your cuff measures about three inches. So now we've knit our cuff and it's about three inches long and you can see that it does fit and we're going to switch onto size US4 needles. These needles that I'm using are the kind that twist off. If you have a separate set, you'll just transfer onto your size four needles. So now we have our three inch rib cuff and our size US4 needles. And we're just going to continue in stockinette stitch. So since we're knitting in the round, that's just knit stitches all the way around. And we'll knit about four or five rows until we have a half an inch of stockinette. Just continue in knit stitch all the way around for about four to five rows. Now we have about half an inch of stockinette worked above our cuff, and we're going to start making our increases for the thumb gusset. So slide your stitch marker to your right hand needle and we'll make our first increase. And this is a make one below increase. So You'll find the stitch, your next stitch, and you'll find the V directly underneath it. And insert your right hand needle into that V and just work a knit stitch. And then work that same stitch that is above it. And then continue knitting and stockinette. So that's one increase made. And we'll now knit two regular knit rows and then increase twice more, and this will be the start of your thumb. Now we have knit two plain rows, and we're coming back around to our stitch marker, and we'll work our next increase. So slip your stitch marker, and you'll make one below. Find that stitch, make one below. Pull through and knit the stitch on your left-hand needle. Then you'll knit one and make one below again. So you'll continue in this way, making an increase row and then two plain knit rows. And just follow along with the pattern. We'll provide the link down below. At this point, we've made all our increases for the thumb and we're going to transfer the stitches for the hand onto waist yarn. So slip your marker and for the small size you'll knit 17 stitches. And then we'll transfer the next 44 stitches onto waist yarn. So to do that You'll take your darning needle, I like to use a contrasting thread so you can see where your stitches are later, and you'll just pick up those stitches onto your darning needle and drop your circular needle off. So now we have our working thumb stitches on our circular needle and the hand stitches on waist yarn and we're going to work our thumb in the round using the magic loop method. And you'll place your stitch marker again to keep your place. 
and continue working your thumb in the round and you'll knit until your thumb is about an inch and a half to two inches long but you can try it on at this point and just keep in mind that the decreases for the thumb are about half an inch to two-thirds of an inch long. So now we've knit our thumb to around an inch and a half long and you can try it on just to see if it feels right for you. The decrease will be about half an inch, or maybe a little bit longer. So this looks about right to me. So we'll start our decrease rows. And for the small size, we're going to knit two together, knit four, knit two together, knit three. Knit two together again. Knit four. Knit two together and then knit the final three stitches. Then slip your marker and knit one row. When we come back around, we'll create one more decreased row. So you'll knit two together, knit three, knit two together, knit three, knit two together, and knit the final two. Now we'll work one more knit row, and then we'll cinch the top of the thumb. When you come back around to your stitch marker on that final knit row, you can remove your marker and you'll cut your yarn. Then thread the end onto your darning needle and just pick up those final stitches. So you'll just slide those final stitches onto the tail end of your yarn. Then you can put your needle aside then you'll cinch close the top of your thumb and just weave in that tail end. And you can pass this tail to the inside to weave in later. Fits. <laughs> so that's your thumb worked. Now we'll pick up these stitches and start knitting the hand of your mitten. So just pick up those stitches using your US 4 needle and we'll start knitting around in stockinette until your hand measures about three inches from where the thumb meets the fingers. So now we have all the stitches for the hand back on our circular needle and we will just join our main yarn again and start knitting in the round stockinette until your hand measures about three inches. So you'll place your marker again and then just pick up the tail end of your yarn and start knitting in the round. There's no front or back to this mitten both the left and right sides are the same, so you don't have to worry which side you're starting from. Now we have the hand of our mitten knit to about three inches here, and you can try it on for fit. My general gauge is it should just cover your pinky finger. 
uh, the decrease will be about an inch and a half on the top. So now we will start our decrease and shaping the top of our mitten. So slip your marker and we will knit one, then slip, slip, knit those two stitches, and then knit 16. Then we will knit two together, knit one, then place your second marker, knit one, slip, slip, knit, and then knit to two stitches before your next marker. Then knit three stitches before your next marker. Now we are three stitches before our next marker, so we will knit two together, and then knit one. Then we'll slip our marker and knit the next row. When we come back around, you'll continue decreasing in this way to shape the top of your mitten. So now we have our finished mitten, all the ends are woven in, and we're ready to create the heart embroidery on the top here. So I'll show you how to do that with, I'm using black as my contrasting color today. So this is called a duplicate stitch, and it mimics a knit stitch. So to create a duplicate stitch, we will come underneath a bar and this tail end you'll push to the back at the end but this is an easy way to come into your embroidery here and you can see the knit stitch here we're going to mimic this shape so pass your darning needle underneath the stitch above and then come back down into the same place where your yarn first came out. And then pass your needle under the bar above. And that's your first duplicate stitch. I'll pull this tail into the back so it's not so distracting. And you'll just weave that tail in at the end. That's how you create your duplicate stitch. So using your duplicate stitch, follow along with the pattern for size and shape, and then you have your finished heart-shaped mittens ready for the winter or for gifting. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please comment down below and let us know what you'd like to make next. And tag us on Instagram, we'd love to see your creations.